By the way, you should wait for 2x events. And we get food. Got it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our first 6 star. These are just the top 5 rares that I think are great for progression. If you're a newer player, on this account, if I pulled these champions, I'd be pretty happy. The first one's going to be Apothecary. Now I have him. I'm excited for him. He bumped up my damage from not even doing a one key on easy to easily doing a one key on easy. He has application, which boosts and encourages survivability and damage within clan boss and not just clan boss, but arena. He's great as a speed booster with his A3. The idea that I have for him is to make him go fast, faster than the other team. And he's going to be the fastest one on my team. So he does the speed up, a turn meter fill, and then that allows the rest of my team to do their damage in arena. Let me. This isn't ideal because my apothecary is still not the fastest one on my team. In fact, Sun Wukong is, but you guys will see when I finally get the team together. Not to mention he has his A2, which heals quite a bit keeping your entire team alive. And again, these are not in any specific particular order. This is just, as they came into my mind, this is this is how I listed them down. Now we have Bellower, an amazing champion from the Ogren tribes. He is a void rare champion, so he's a little bit harder to get, but if you do get him, he's awesome. The first and foremost thing will have to be that because all of his moves are AoEs, he's a great candidate for campaign farming. He's a six second farmer. He hits hard enough to be able to smash through the waves. He's great early on, especially if you're looking to clear through waves in the dungeons. In arena, he can hit hard. You can put a stun set on him. He can stun waves in PVE or PVP, and he's gonna help you out in faction wars. For the normal Hydra, he'll do pretty well. I don't know about the harder levels, but I'd be super happy if I got him. He's got decreased speed on the A2. Decrease defense and weaken the small version though on the A3. Nevertheless, Bellower is one of the best, but I'm not a rapper. Speaking of clan boss, we're also gonna have to mention, and by the way, I'm not going to talk about Kale here. Everybody knows about Kale. I, you know, think he's great, but he falls off. So for that reason, I don't think he's one of the best per se. Frozen Banshee though. If I had to choose between Kale and Frozen Banshee, I would probably pick Frozen Banshee. She places poisons if you have poison sensitivity. She does, well actually I don't even use this move on clan boss. Her A3 places that said poison sensitivity, but she places a lot of poisons on her A1. It's a 100% chance of placing and it's the big version, whereas Kale places one and it's only the small version of it. Poison sensitivity will also increase the damage that is received by the clan boss. She's a magic affinity champion, not the hardest one to get. You get her from pretty much just pulling your regular shards. Accuracy for all allies increased in battles. She is able to boost your damage up significantly. In fact, I've used her quite a bit when I was still learning how to do clan boss. We're also going to have to talk about cold heart. There's no way Coldheart does not make this list. You might already know about it, but in case you don't know about it, Coldheart is an amazing champion. Her A1 attacks four times. It's at random, but if you're going up against a boss like Fire Knight, it's all on him. Hits four times. Places the heal reduction, but although that does help, especially early on, that's not the main thing she's there for. If you do happen to place a heal reduction, you can also place poisons. Her calling card is her A3. Her damage on this move is going to be based off of enemy max HP, EMHP. Because it's based off of enemy max HP, this hits really hard. You're able to one shot or at least take huge chunks out of bosses. And that is a huge boon for anybody using her. You also have the target turn meter decrease by 100% going up against somebody like Fire Knight or Spider, it's going to tilt it in your favor. In fact, a lot of you guys might even be able to 
beat the boss before they even take a turn if you're able to set this up properly. Also has a 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit, which means you don't have to build her with a 100% crit rate. You could set her down at 70% crit rate and focus those extra stats into her damage instead. If I pulled Renegade, I would be really happy because that means I would have a mini Kaimar or a mini Yumiko, somebody to reset the cooldowns of my ally skills. So the way I see this happening, the way I, I use it to farm my own dungeons on my main account is I have a nuker, then I have a reset champion. I do have Kaimar and I do have Yumiko on my main account, but if I pulled Renegade on this account, that means that at the very least, I could nuke down the first wave, reset on the second wave, and then nuke down again to get to the boss a lot faster. She enables us to do that with her A3. Her A1, her A2 aren't much to talk about, and her passive is okay just as well. But the idea is resetting cooldowns will enable you to speed farm dungeons, and that's basically what you end up going for because you want to save as much time when you start heading into the end game when it comes to farming dungeons. You want to get through the waves as fast as you can, cut your times down, that way you can be more efficient when it comes to farming. I had to give a shout out to a good runner-up champion who didn't quite make the list is Reliquary Tender. She does have a decreased attack on the A1, it's a weak version, not much to talk about, but she does have the removal of all debuffs from all allies and then places a continuous heal. This is on a three turn cooldown, so this is a huge ability here. As well as the revive, you can revive one champion, it's on a five turn cooldown though. Now, she didn't quite make this list just because one, I haven't used her, and then two, when I look at her as a rare in comparison to what the other champions has provided me in my past experiences, I don't think she outshines somebody like Apothecary or Frozen Banshee who can increase my clan boss damage, or Bellower who can farm in six seconds in campaign, or Coldheart who can help to speed farm dungeons as well as Renegade who can help to speed farm just as well. And I would be remiss if I did not even mention Bulwark. If I pulled him on my free-to-play account, I think I would be relatively happy. He is a defense-based champion, so he's going to be tanky. A1 will provide weaken. Weaken will increase the damage that a target receives. This is a 15, 20, 25, 30% chance to do so, but still, it's a weaken. And then he has a 100% chance of placing HP burn for two turns, but this is the thing here, his passive, whenever he's attacked, he has a 30% chance, if you get mass threes, it could be 35%, of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the attacker by one. So going up against the clan boss, imagine this, you have the weaken, you have HP burns, you have some poisons up, you got the decreased defense, maybe some decreased attack, etc. All of that. Every time he's hit, there's a chance to increase that. For a rare, I think he's really great. In some sense, he's sort of like a mini Vizier Ovelis who can increase the duration of debuffs on his A1. And then he has increased ally defense in all battles by 17%. Really tight champion. And then if you pulled Avir the Alchemage, I think you should keep him because this guy carried me in Faction Wars when I was struggling for quite some time. Poison on the A1. AoE decrease attack and decrease speed. As well as filling the turn meter and healing. So he's a great support champion, especially for a rare. And then Paragon is an absolute cheese lord.